Hey, what's up, everybody? This is the Insonic ASRX Pro. Uh, it is an awesome sampler and a terrible sampler all at the same time. Um, this was sent to me for repair by uh, Colt45. I will give you his uh, links to his socials and all that. But he wanted me to repair this um, rotary encoder switch, which I did. And I tested it and there was issues and I tested it again and there was more issues. And I found out through a long process and uh, lots of research that there was there's a lot of issues with the operating system with this machine. But, but if you can get past some of the, the internal glitches, uh, this is an incredible sampler. Um, so let's just go with the, the pros first here, okay? The pros, um, it sounds amazing. It truly does. It's really, it's uh, really high fidelity, right? Uh, it's got 20-bit uh, sampling input, right? 16-bit uh, processing, 18-bit on the way out. So what, what does that mean, right? So... 20 bit going in means that in the real world you can sort of get away with sampling just about anything right you can sample it at a low volume you can sample it at a high volume smashing it in there or anywhere in between and it'll sound good this thing was made for capturing samples on the fly quickly and it was just made to make them sound good you're going to get a lot of depth of range, uh, you know, uh, that, that's what 20 bits will do. It'll give you a, a nice um, amplitude headroom, right? So you'll be able, like I said, you can sample in quiet or loud. It'll still sound good. Um, what it, The other thing that I love about this is how, how easy it is to sample and to quickly just assign your samples to all the pads that is sort of a, a game changer. This is actually fun to sample in. Uh, a lot of machines are not. <laughs> and that even includes the MPC series, the classic MPC series. There's just, there's a lot of menu diving before you can even start playing the samples. That's not the case with this. Uh, you sample in, you get a scratch pad where you can audition your sounds. You see, and I have, I still have a sound loaded in there. But, and then you can assign those sounds anywhere you want uh, around here. And actually you can transpose up and just continue to sample hundreds of sounds if you want. So here's what I have sampled in. Nice bass tone, hi-hat loop, bass drum, snare, and of course that, that pad sweeping pad sound. Um, so, you might be wondering, well, what's all this here? What's all this? So let's get to the cons of the device. The sequencer is, well, the operating system in and of itself is really volatile. In other words, I'll be scrolling through, and this is what caused the problem uh, that I mentioned earlier when I tried to repair it. You'll be scrolling through, all of a sudden your, 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 your rotary knob will appear to be freezing up. Well, it's not freezing up. The rotary knob itself is working fine. I know because I tested it in and out of the circuit about five different times. It was working every time. It's actually the operating system that's freezing up. So anytime, anytime you go into some of these parameters, the machine itself will think about it and think about it and think about it. And then boom, it'll go on to the next. But by that point, you would have already scrolled trying to compensate for it. You would have already scrolled about three or four ticks either direction. And then it'll just freak out. It'll just jump all over the place. <laughs> so it, it was very frustrating trying to fix this. And it's frustrating trying to just use this machine especially to sequence and i was thinking well maybe it's because the ram is getting overloaded or something and if you get like three or four tracks deep into your sequence things will start glitching up then no i mean sometimes i'll even go on the first track of sequencing and try to program just some drum parts and the third bass drum just will not 
just w won't sequence. It just won't appear anywhere in the sequence. And then you try to go to the step edit, and it still won't sink it in. It's really, like I said, it's a really strange machine in, in that way. It just kind of glitches and does whatever it wants. And like I said, sometimes you'll be scrolling through the, your uh, finite parameters, and then it'll just jump eight ticks for no reason whatsoever. It'll just do whatever it wants. Um, so, <laughs> uh, oh, the other big thing with this is build quality, right? These tend to go bad, um, and so they need to be replaced at some point. The screen is good. These buttons are really finicky. They have these little tack switches and they have these little plastic posts that ride to the tack switches up to the surface. If you press these too hard, you can break that post and you'll lose a button, right? And you'll often see these in the used market missing a button or two, right? Uh, but strangely, this system of buttons is built differently than this system of buttons. And these are membrane. So you have to go really gingerly and light with these button presses. And then these, you have to sort of slam them in there to change. You know, you have to really use some force. Well, like I said, you'll get used to that. And after a while, you're like, oh, okay, I have to adjust the parameter over here. Let's go light. Okay, now I want to go up an octave. Bam! And <laughs> so that's what it's like using this. Really finicky. But the sound is so good. It's so, it's robust and round and, and just very, it's a very bold sound. Um, like I said, anything you put in, it comes out sounding better. And so that's why it's a good idea to pair it with an external sequencer and to basically use this as just a sampler slash resampler and or effects machine, right? The effects in this are incredible. Better than any other hardware sampler I've ever run it maybe the Yamaha A3000 but any hardware sampler that I've ever used the effects on this just just kicks its ass it's so good it's so good so let's just <laughs> play a sequence like I said I just showed you the sounds so let's just play a sequence I'm using the MPC Beats uh, software it's a free software and this is kind of the best of both worlds this controller you're gonna see is controlling the pad mutes. It also controls the pad performances so I can play these, these big chords that I use for this sweeping pad sound here. So let's just run through this. So yeah, that's basically what you can do with this if you hook it up to an external sequencer. And I love the MPC software for the ability of acting like an MPC somewhat. I have issues with the MPC software as well, but uh, I much rather prefer to use a hardware MPC from anywhere, you know, from all the way up from the, the 60 all the way up to like the 2500 or 5000, right? Uh, anything past that, you start dealing with software, and they tried too hard to make a DAW seem like an MPC. Anyways, um, but if you just use the software just to sequence MIDI events, it's great. Um, so what should I do here? Just to show you how easy it is to sample things in, uh, I truly love the way this sounds when you sample things in. Let's just go over here and uh, let's just put in some vocal samples here. I think I have some stuff that, uh... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, so let's let's grab these two. So what you would want to do is you go to setup. This is how easy it is to sample here, okay? This is why I love this thing. You go over here to setup. I have like 7.2 seconds. Don't need that. I probably need about uh, like that, uh, like 1.2 seconds. Cool. So now if you go further into setup, you're going to go over here. You see here, here's that, that glitch. It's like, oh, let me think about moving here. So yeah, there's the threshold trigger. That looks good. Um, boom, boom, boom. We have normalize on, stereo. Okay, this is all looking good. So let me just hit start and then I'll press play over here. Oh. So now I have this over here. Oh. Wow, and that really normalized the shit out of it. Um, so oh. now it's asking send to pads, what pads do I want? Sure, let's just put it over here. All right, then you hit enter. Oh, 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 oh. Cool. Let's sample something else in. I think I wanted the one right above it, so let's go over here and... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm, not, no, that, that, that needs more time. So we're going to go back into setup, and let's... Ooh, not six. You see how it just jumped from two to six? That's, that's what this machine does. All right, so I'm going to go 2.1. Cool. Let's hit that again. Boom. Oh, yeah. And normalize. Oh, yeah. Cool. Let's do that. And so now. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. So let's go back over here. And, uh, uh, oh, yeah, because I have everything muted. So boom, boom, boom. <laughs> Let's sample that in. So um, what I have here going on here is um, I have I have th I have this track number five here, right? Track number. Oh wait, 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 wait. Let's just exit out of there. Okay, I have track number five is just a MIDI out channel. And so what I'm going to be doing over here is I'm going to be setting up another track in the NPC software. So let's go with uh, control out bracket. So now we have, oh wait, I already have all those tracks. So we're going to go out bracket until we hit something unused. Cool. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my MIDI in. And this is the MIDI device that I'm using. I'm using that on track five. Remember, that's our MIDI track. Boom, so it's sending out, but I want this to come, oh my God, stupid software. Okay, uh, so track five, cool. So now I want this to come back in uh, on, on channel one. This is where this drum machine lives, right? So, but this is gonna be on a separate track. Um, so now what I'm gonna be doing here is, oh, 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 oh. right? But this is all only MIDI information. We're on track five in the machine, and now it's sending a MIDI loop over here. So what I'm gonna do is just go. And you can see that there's sort of some uh, some glitches here as far as the, the timing is concerned. And that's fine. What we're going to do here is we're just going to go select all. And I'm going to go control shift T and just sort of uh, shove this to, uh, yeah, the strength of that. Sure. Oh, yeah. Cool. All right. Uh, and let's hit do it. So now this should be in time. <laughs> I don't 
like where that put the timing at. That's cool. We can just undo that. Let's go control shift T again. And we're going to sort of nudge this over here. Let's put this at 32. And let's do that. Let's see what it did. <laughs> Nope, I still don't like it, and that's 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 all right. So we're gonna go over here, and I just kind of want to let's see if I can. Uh, oh, whoa, wait. Uh, let's see if I can just nudge all these over. Uh, nope, I want to nudge that even further. So. Uh, Cool. So this this is really bugging me here. So we're gonna go back. We're gonna go back and do some sound design. So let's go to track one. Let's go to pad edit, and I want to. And I just want to shove that down. Shove that down. Sorry about that. Don't be. Cool. So now let's go over here. And I want to sort of adjust the, the 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 tail of this here. I want the release time. So let's go over here. Oh boy! All right. You see how it's it's sort of glitching out. Um, that's fine. We can always go over here. Envelope three. And ramp time decay time no we want release time so we're just going to wait for the machine to just do what it wants to do over here and okay release time cool best sequence I ever come up with but you sort of get the point this is a fun machine to sample on bring up your sound library this like I said this is a great pairing with a laptop setup because you can sort of use this to um you can sort of use this as a uh you can sort of use this as as sort of a, a, a midi keyboard um and sort of sample all of your stuff. It will sequence all your stuff in the sequencer. Use this as a MIDI controller keyboard and have all the samples live in here and gain all that, that wonderful sound that you can only get from having one of these hardware samplers. And this one by far, I think kind of complements this type of uh, situation. If you wanted a tabletop, normally I just use my EPS Classic <laughs> to do this with the computer setup, but this gets the job done. And if you're gonna only get one hardware sampler and you have about 400 bucks to spend, this would be the one right here, right? If you wanted something that could give you a really high fidelity sound. Uh, but you can also do sample, you can also do bit rate reduction on this, go to 8-bit. This gives you a lot of options. You also have effects, insert effects, delays and flangers and reverbs and all sorts of wonderful effects with this. So um, that's kind of my review of the Insonic ASRX Pro. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Peace. <laughs>